Hi, this is the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, and you're listening to Growing Up Geek. <laughs> it's forbidden. Celebrity endorsements, dude. What do you think? It could work if we can get it to, like, can we come up with enough? Hi, this is Neil Blonkoff, the director of District 9. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 87th episode of Growing Up Geek, the weekly podcast for geek entertainment and nostalgia. My name is Brad and I am joined by my long-lost brother, Rob. It was very complex. Yes. Shadow. The shadows (laughs) were very complex this week. Very very complex shadows. Uh, But you have been away, so welcome back. It's good to be back. It's It's good to be here. You've been looking for housing again? Well, I've been looking for a housing situation that suits me. I feel like people who listen to this show think that you lose your house every week. You've talked about the house that burned down. <laughs> You've talked about, I, I, I don't know, maybe that's exaggerating. But Long story short, leases were reaching their critical mass and things decisions had to be made. So yes. things are looking up. Awesome. Good to have you back. Because you're near me. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> let us go ahead and jump into some geek news. Um, I know there was lots of cool stuff. I'm really excited. I haven't told you what mine is yet, uh, but what was your favorite geek news story this week? Well, I mean, I'm definitely excited that I, I got to see the Avatar trailer. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of like uh, maybe not the most auspicious occasion. Right. You know, the way that Avatar Day was across the country where people like bought tickets, got glasses, got to see a thing. Right. I was simply watching Hulu and <laughs> yeah. just like, you know, ha, 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 30 Rock's funny. And then all of a sudden, Avatar trailer comes on and I'm like, what? What? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's available now. Oh, full screen this, full screen this. I gotta. Is it? Can I put this on my TV? Oh, it's it's standard definition. Right. You know, like it, it wasn't. It wasn't as huge a thing yeah. as I wanted it to be. Yes. But regardless, I got to see it. I got to then go back and download a, a high def thing and watch it over again. Yep. And so. Yeah. So the Avatar trailer has been so hyped mm-hmm. up, and we've talked about it on the show too. It like the second coming of CG. You know. And that's yeah. how I felt whenever I was I was loading it in my QuickTime, and, and I was loading it in a web browser also. And I felt kind of lame about that. I'm like, okay, I want this to be as ideal as possible. Quiet everything down. And it rolled, and disappointment oh. washed over me. Um, yeah. Not only was the CG not realistic to me, but honest to God, what I first thought whenever I saw the aliens was, that looks like Delgo, that CG d- direct-to-video movie or whatever. And come to find later that a lot of other websites also thought it looked like Delgo. Like the characters. <laughs> yeah. Not realistic. It did not look anything like people had described it. You know, people said this looked like, you know, real people. It looks like cartoon people. It is Delgo. And it's funny that the, uh, the creators of Delgo have actually <laughs> chimed in on this and said that the similarities are so shocking that they're considering legal action. Um, mm. And who knows how successful that'll be. But but what did you think? I mean, well, I guess I, I'm sort of suspending my disbelief. Okay. Um, for the time being, because it, you know what, it, it it does kind of seem impressive. I almost am like maybe I, I I'm not viewing this on the right kind of screen. But yeah. I will say, yeah, the computer graphics were very obvious. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and and maybe like in part it's because well clearly that doesn't really exist. True. But there, there was a moment like when it first started off, right? And we sort of get away with spoiling the trailer, but yeah. But the guy's getting off a wheelchair, right? Right. Off from a, a spaceship, and there's a mech behind him and stuff. I seriously, it was like watching a Sega CD. Yeah. Computer graphics rendered like yeah. it, it actually looked bad. Like it looked like test footage, you know? Yeah. See, the thing is. This is this kind of CG where everything is like very painterly. You texture everything with insane like colors and otherworldly looks, and yeah. it ends up feeling like a painting or something. Like it doesn't. It was the same as I felt right. during Attack of the Clones. Like I couldn't connect with it because it's just so over the top that it looks like a CG cinema. Now that's kind of though how I, I I'm wondering like will it be more realistic if I go see this with 3D glasses on right because the the general tone of the movie needs to be set yeah for example you, we always talk about how realistic Gollum looked yes. in the two towers this is sub Gollum for sure well yeah but well you may say that now right but honestly 
Lord of the Rings had its own kind of painterly look throughout even the live action. The tones were a certain way and things like that. So maybe once you get used to that right. and then you import these you know, computer graphics in, now you might be like, oh, well, actually, that does look like it's right there. It looks like it's in the room. I know it's not real, right. but I, it looks like it. I see what you're saying, so, like more stylized. Like Beowulf I actually thought looked great because all the way through it was all CG. You know? Right. Well, they, there were a few moments in the trailer where I did say, you know what, that does look very real. Okay. You know, For something that I know is computer graphics, yeah. it does look like that is you know material that like that that's prosthetic yeah. or, or or something like that it's not that's a, a real living creature but at least that's not made on a computer that's made using you know whatever like rubber or, or things like that you know yeah and i think maybe that that's crossing a, a certain threshold there but uh yeah we, we wanted to talk about this um the uncanny valley and, and, and what this movie kind of hopes to address. Yeah, if we could, I'd like to just quickly go into the uncanny valley a little bit <laughs> to go right. into detail on the theory, uh, which was created by this Japanese roboticist in the 70s. And the thing is, in this trailer, like they've made the CG aliens look very close to human. And I think that's why I feel like they look so fake. Right. Well, I, I first came across the, the term whenever I was looking at a, a trailer for a video game called Heavy Rain. Right, yeah. Which was supposed to, you know, also be, be this kind of um, landmark visual type of acting, importing actors into a video game. Yeah. And it looked awful, you know. And you, it's hard to put my finger on why, because you could say, well, these graphics are incredible, but this person just looks disturbing right <clears throat> and and so people started to say this term uncanny valley uncanny valley so i looked it up and uh yeah masahiro mori in 1970s uh was a roboticist who was you know trying to make humanoid robots and he was noticing that as he was developing them people's you know the reactions as they got m- more and more realistic became more and more positive you know it was more and more emotionally evocative right but then there was a point in the development where it actually everybody was reacting negatively even though the androids were more realistic this is why he called it a valley i guess was right. it went happy happier happier and then it suddenly dropped as the thing was close to human yeah because at at that point uh, uh, his theory is that now it it looks like a human but it looks like a sick human or it looks like a disturbed human or it looks like a corpse or a zombie. Right. And our brains are meant to recognize this. Right. You know, there, Something this is, is wrong. unsafe. Yep. You know, yep. this this person is sick and we should stay away from them. Right. And so until you, you can cross that, you know, which even now it's hard to say whether or not it really has been done. Yeah. But until you can get to the point where you look like a not just a person but a healthy person, right? A person that is fully articulate and animated and 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 it doesn't show any signs of inhumanity. Right. You're, you're always going to have kind of a negative reaction. I think that's what happens to me anyway with this CG. There's a part where the one alien puts his hand on the glass and he says something. And as he smiles, and it's just the smile is like disturbing to me. It's it's yeah. it's like stupid and and CG, and it's almost human, but some, for some reason that makes it a million times worse. Yeah, because one thing that CG has a terrible time capturing is human error. Right. You know, flaws. You know, it's like okay, look into the screen and smile and say, "This is great." Yeah. You know, well, an actor is going to kind of maybe screw it up a little. You know, yeah. like the, the face but, twitches a little bit. There's a little yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, but with computer graphics, I mean, even if they're trying their best to make it look realistic, it's yeah. always based on an ideal. And and remember, like if you've ever watched the making of Attack of the Clones and. Yoda's sword fight. Yeah, you know George Lucas had to chime in and be like, "Well, we, you know, well we want to go for it to be more uh, idealized and, and romanticized right. Right, right. than yeah. the actual realistic." And and that's what leads to it kind of looking like crap, you know. Yeah. So negative reaction to the trailer from me. Um, I feel like I don't quite know where you stand on it. Are you are you positive with it? I'm optimistic based off on the original reaction of all these trusted geeks. You know, right? They'll speak their mind if it doesn't look. Right. Totally. You know, they'll, they'll get in there. And they were all impressed. And, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm watching this three-minute trailer. I may need to be sitting down with, obviously, the 3D glasses are right. going to do a lot to make this. Does this look real? Like, can you see subtlety and texture? Yeah, I think those Sega CD cutscenes might 
become quite exciting on in 3D. Like if there's actual True. depth to him rolling off that carrier and you see the planet in the background and the fog and everything, you might be like, okay, I, I was wrong, you know? Yeah, not to mention... There, there may be things that are, you know, in, in a two-dimensional trailer that they had to kind of flatten. Right. Maybe that's what's going to be causing that yeah. sort of discrepancy in what we're seeing on the 2D trailer. Yeah. All right. So that is Avatar. That was your favorite news story of the week. Yep. Yep. And uh, my favorite news story of the week, I, I've been holding this off from you because very excited. Rhapsody has submitted their iPhone application for review. Whoa! Yes, the the day basic to me like the digital apocalypse has finally arrived <laughs> because I've I've always said to you and you know I've said on the show a million times I've been waiting for Rhapsody to be available on the iPhone. Well, all that's in the way of that right now is Apple, and I'm sort of holding my breath here. Um, couple of quick things about it is it is a streaming application. It is designed to let you stream all eight million tracks from Rhapsody's library. Um, there are actually screenshots up already on some tech sites that show uh, the ability to add songs to a playlist and remove them from that playlist. Uh, searching, I mean, full-blown like browsing of their catalog. Whew. Yes, uh, to me, you buy the iPhone day one. You know, out, out of the box, you are playing eight million tracks. You never store a single one on your iPod. That's the future. Like, I, I think this is so awesome and. There's technology sites that are saying, well, you know, yeah, but you got to subscribe for $15 a month. But did you hear me? <laughs> like, you play yeah. 8 million songs on your iPhone. Like, that's awesome. Um, so it remains to be seen, though, if it will be approved. And here's the thing. Apple turned down the Google Voice app. Yeah. And that got them investigated by the FCC. Because the reason they gave was that it contained features that were... Uh, already present already, on yes, the iPhone. Yes, yes. And it's that, that kind of language, I guess, and that situation smells a little bit like monopoly behavior, where you're like, well, this competes with us, so it can't be allowed. You know, when Microsoft did that on Windows with browsers, you know, when they made, like, Internet Explorer built into everything, yeah. they were quickly, you know, shot down by the FCC, and it was basically like, uh, you have to include, you know, the option to have Firefox and the option to have Chrome. So... Here's the thing. The Google Voice thing was denied because it, you can you can get around like AT&T's long distance charges. But this would be a competition to iTunes. Yeah. And that's where it gets sketchy. Um will Apple reject an application because they think it might compete with iTunes? If they do that, first of all, it'll make me hate Apple a lot more, but what do you think? It's so weird. Like, everybody's talked about sort of the black box that is Apple's approval process, you know? Right. And I, I'm very hopeful, you know? Like, Apple needs to realize that they pretty much have to approve of this, or else they will be handicapping their device against right. what other devices will offer. Yeah, I should say that they have plans to move this to Palm uh -huh. and to move this to Android. Nice. So, so yeah, and I, I feel like those two platforms are pretty open. Well, heck, they well, are open. Yeah, Android is completely open, you know? Like, right. that, that's that's a given. That'll happen. Uh, yeah. Palm is waiting on launching their app store, but, you know, it's slowly trickling out, and eventually, hopefully, yeah. here, it'll, it'll bust forth with great yeah. fervor. But if the Palm Pre gets it and the iPhone doesn't, I mean, I think that's where yeah. you're going with it. Exactly. Right? So, so Apple has to ask itself this question. Are they going to allow their device to be crippled in, in this way? Because I, I think this is a big right. kind of decision as far as them as a company. Well, and Rhapsody as a company, because they admitted that the, the PC as a platform for them is kind of going out. Like, yeah. Rhapsody would really feels the need to take it to the mobile market now. Yeah. Uh, they think that's where things are going to be thriving. Um, especially with music. So this is like, like Christmas Eve to me. Like, well, I'm waiting on this to see what happens. Yeah, this is cool because I, I was seriously watching the news about like Zune HD coming out. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself like, maybe I should get this because it has all <laughs> these features. Yeah. I mean, the one thing, actually I learned that uh, Zune HD has that I hope Rhapsody starts doing right. is uh, that same $15 charge for Zune Pass. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. get to keep like 10 of the tracks or whatever. Right. Every month, month you can choose 10 tracks to keep forever. I think that's genius. So we'll see. I mean, iPhones in a very high pressure situation. And, and will this be their savior, savior or will they say no, but then say yes to iTunes subscription content? Yeah. Oh, well, that's the thing is like if Apple's going to reject this yeah. just because it might be better than iTunes, 
create your own better solution, create your own better subscription service, and then I'll join yours. Because honestly, I don't care about the name Rhapsody. I care about what it gives me, which is all music. You know, right? But and here's also the point. I think iTunes usually, as far as the business, um, the business model that I've seen before, right. iTunes isn't about like that's that's not necessarily where they make the money. Like it's ninety nine right. cents a song, and that goes off to record companies and stuff like that. They make the money on selling the devices and by keeping yeah. that a proprietary thing that can only be played on devices. So I don't think they're giving that up in any way by allowing Rhapsody to, to be available. If anything, they're saying, hey, here's another reason to buy device, you know, buy right. more of this, you know. I hope so, that's their attitude because yeah. I would certainly love to see this. Come but on, Apple, be the hip, groovy guy on the right-hand corner of the screen that you always pretend to be. <laughs> yeah, and if they don't, imagine the commercial comes up and it's like, now available on the Palm Pre, day one, all songs. Yeah. I mean, that's all you have to say and have yeah. some sort of catchy, you know, picture on the screen. I mean, that, yeah, that's they, freaking awesome. Yeah, they could make it like a featured app and have like a free like month whenever you first buy it or something. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Pretty cool. So real quickly, uh, you wanted to say the PS3 Slim came out. Yes. Um, we we got to blaze through that one, but uh, real quickly, go ahead. PS3 Slim. PS3 Slim. It is 30-odd percent smaller, 30 percent lighter, and 30-something percent less power uh, to use. It, it costs $300. Yes. It, it actually has a bay to easily pull out and put in whatever hard drive you want to put in oh, nice. without voiding the warranty or whatever so you can snap in these days they have a 500 gig out yeah you could easily just throw that in there if you want comes with 120 gig and there's already a patent for 250 gig yeah this thing looks awesome yeah and everybody's saying yeah it's two great things it's ps3 finally at a good price right like, price has been cut now you can get your blu-ray player with games and internet connectivity for three hundred dollars and on top of that it's redesigned to be a little smaller take up less power that to me is actually a huge point because the ps3 takes up a lot of power and yeah you if you don't pay for it in the in this device you pay for it in the power bill yeah um all these things, great reasons to to maybe now go out and get yourself a PS3. Yeah. My personal thing is I I think I may. Really? Because I have I have this high def TV and I don't have any Blu-ray. Oh, that's you know? true, yeah. I think that's what's and holding me off is that I do have a Blu-ray player. Honestly, if you can swap in a, like a terabyte drive and they start yeah. releasing like their games digitally the way Microsoft's doing now, like mm-hmm. that could be very, very sweet. They're redesigning the operating system and everything. I mean, that's a separate thing, but it's going to be in the Oh, that's cool. Slim. That's cool. I mean, and I've said before, there's a whole bunch of PS3 games I really want to play. I guess that's part of the problem, too, is if I buy an additional system, it means additional games that I can now play, which with limited right. time and money is possibly a bad thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's like a, just a wealth, yeah, of, yeah, a wealth of distractions. I'm sure my wife would love that. Um, pretty cool. Now, $300 strikes me as a little high. Well, you know what that is? That that brings them down to the standard price that you're you're looking at pretty much across the board here. You know, it's about 250 for a Wii. It's it's pretty much 300 and 300 for a 360 right now. And, you know, there's a lot of games that are on both. So Sweet. It, it might be a good choice for people now. Yeah, and speaking of the 360, uh this week our main topic of discussion, if I may, is Shadow Complex, uh an Xbox Live Arcade release developed by Chair, which I love saying, um, and downloadable now on the Xbox uh, Live Marketplace. Kind of ambitious for an Xbox Live Arcade game. It's a side-scrolling, uh, two-dimensional platformer. Um, mm-hmm. I, I basically consider this like a real game, like a full game. Yeah. You basically play as a guy who is on a romantic vacation in the woods with his girlfriend. I think it's his girlfriend. <laughs> and then he, uh, she is, uh, she, she she travels uh, down into a tunnel and ends up stumbling upon a complex, hence the title. And he has to go in after, and she gets kidnapped. Uh, he delves deeper and deeper into the shadow complex, basically. Um, what did you think of this game? Uh, wow. Um, so far, I love it. You know, I I played the sweet. demo twice, and then pretty much had to had to get it. You know. And not mm-hmm. just because I wanted to do the review for it. <laughs> um, cause, no, me too. But this was, it was just so fun. And 
if I may just harp on the same notes that a lot of people are saying about this game, it is difficult to put down. Yes. I'm not saying it's a particularly long game or anything like that. Like, I don't know. I haven't reached the end, yeah. but it really just every every second you're playing it, you're like, ooh, more stuff, you know? Like, and, yes. And, and it has that kind of exploration slash upgrading, you know, like thing that, that Metroid and Castlevania had so that you're constantly yeah. stimulated to, to continue moving on. Like, whether it be you're actually moving into new territory or that you've discovered a new ability that allows you to do something different in the old territory, there's always a reason to be playing this game, you know? Yeah, you'll go into an area that has something in it you can't do and you feel kind of helpless, but you have like a pistol, you know? Yeah. And then you'll come back to that area later with like missiles and, and like an underwater suit and you feel awesome. Yeah. You know, it's one of the things that reoccurs in almost every great game I've played is you feel like you are the man. Um, this is probably one of the better games that I've played lately and it's an XBLA game. You know, like this is as good as any retail shelf game that I've played uh, in the recent memory anyway. Um Let's talk about the gameplay. You said Castlevania and Metroid. I actually haven't seen people mention Ninja Gaiden and Contra, hmm. which are two things that occurred to me a lot, especially with the wall jumping. Uh, yeah, that that is in there. Well, you know what it is, is that Ninja Gaiden and Contra were linear games. You, know? you don't go back to the same area. Exactly. Yeah. And I must say that the map is great in this yeah. game, and I'm never lost because there's this giant blue line that shows where to go and I can branch off and I mean were you surprised how many like branching <laughs> yeah I, I think it, it speaks to something where um, usually I'm, I'm used to games that, that have a little section to branch off like a little hidden mm-hmm. thing but I'm yeah. used to that always kind of ending and then you can come back and be like alright I, I checked that out now back to the main thing right in this game those branches will just take you to a completely different thing, you know? Yeah, like, and I'm using jumping skills that I haven't used in, like, 20 years. You know, like, I'm tapping back into, like, 8-year-old Brad because it's a 2D platformer, which is great, you know? I, the yeah. other night, I used a boomerang jump, but it was, like, boomerang uh, jump 2.0 because I had a rocket pack at the same time. Um, yeah. and, and so I jumped out and then quickly jumped back against the wall and I turned to Amber and I was like, that was full on Mario Brothers stuff right there. Turning in midair, but with a rocket yeah. pack. And I was like, that is sweet. So I just, I love that. And the swimming, the way that you're, you know, your animation, the animation is great in this game. Yeah. Um, or, or just booby traps. Like you can go into a room. I, I shot a wire off of a wall and it came down and electrocuted a guy. And then I shot the wire and it fell off. Like it gives you a, a an ability to, see assess a room of dudes and sort of figure out the way you want to do it and you might even figure out oh there's a way i never even thought of over here yeah it's really interesting how they play with perspective and and the the gameplay is Mm two-dimensional but the world is definitely three-dimensional right they introduce into two-dimensional gameplay a lot of the lessons or or a lot of the uh, ideas that three-dimensional games have have since come up with you know yeah so that that you can walk into a room and have a guy in the background that's shooting at you and you're you're you know crouched behind something right. and because of him being further back than you like he's he's not hitting you right um like that's cool and something that on an original 2D you know screen game wouldn't work wouldn't really yeah. make sense oh but yeah and running up to dudes and pressing B goes into yeah. this close-up anime. I love that they can do that because it is 3D. They can just go into high detail close-up of you pummeling the dude and it goes right back out to the 2D. Yeah. And then I, I love how it handles aiming like because yeah. that even plays with perspective. It's You have up, down, left. Like you have a two-dimensional range, right. but they always have it kind of smartly figure out, okay, are you aiming at the guy straight ahead of you or is it to the guy at, straight ahead and off to the side? Yeah. You know, like... Did you get to the turret by any chance? Yes. We're That's one thing in the preview. I was like, this is weird. It switches to 3D. Mm-hmm. It was the only time that I've gotten to so far that did that, and it felt great yeah. when you finally get that turret. That was that was crazy, you know, because you, you're, you're looking at this whole world in this one perspective, and then suddenly, bam, you're in a different perspective, and you're... 
And it I, shows how detailed the world actually is because you're like, yeah. you're pummeling the walls with bullets and like chunks of wall are falling off and stuff. And I'm like, man, I, I can't say enough. This game is designed so well, so smart. And for an XBLA title, like it completely keeps blowing my mind that this is a downloadable game because it's it's the caliber of like, I, I don't want to go over the top, but like Valve maybe mm. where yeah. I'm partly playing it for my own enjoyment and I'm partly playing it to get inside the heads of these guys who made this. You know, it like you could do a run of the mill shooter and they just went completely over and above. Yeah, and I think what it, it does bespeak of something that uh, sorry, I keep using these big English words. Um <laughs> Go ahead. sorry. W- whither t- whithersoever uh, you proceed. Proceed. Um with the the Xbox, the new Xbox Live experience that that's recently come out, the ability to rate games has been added. Oh yeah. Yes, and this is one of the first games to be subjected to that. And I'm looking at it right now. There are forty two thousand four hundred twenty reviews of this game submitted, and the game holds right. four and a half stars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That it, well, it's pretty awesome. And 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 exactly like you said, a perfect use of the rating system. You know, is this game worth a darn? And the community can vote. I love that. And and they apparently love it. You know, there's a there's exactly. a half star, but. You know, that's somebody who just wanted to, you know, be like, eh, I don't like violence. <laughs> yeah. If you have the ability to get this game, I highly recommend it. You know, it's $15 in Microsoft Space Bucks, mm-hmm. but I definitely would say it is fully worth it. I mean, it, it is worth more than that, in my opinion. Such a value. Hey, did you notice while you were playing that it, it actually compares your score to your friend's score? I don't yeah, know. that was cool. It came up and said, Jason had this many points. And I was like, what? Yeah, and I, I saw thought he was like trying to message me. I punched a guy, and it's like, yeah, you 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 did good, but did you know that Brad actually has punched more people than you? I'm like, oh, I gotta punch <laughs> more people. It's you pretty know? cool. Yeah, it almost like <laughs> has its own like live arcade features. Um, yeah. It also gives you a free gamer picture. Yeah. At one point, did you see that? I was like, that, whoa, that was a brilliant idea. I mean, these are these are just to show these the way these guys think. Chair yeah. is is doing a great job here, and they're like. Why? Why do we always have to give achievements? Why can't we give them a picture? You know? that, that's so cool. Yeah, and and boss battles are so smart. I, I anyway, there's just too much to even go into. Yeah. Buy Shadow Complex. I have no problem saying that. Yes. Um, Buy. I it. feel like I'm more enthusiastic about this than I have been about a lot of games that we reviewed on this that are full discs, and mm-hmm. that's really cool to me. Try yeah. the demo if you want, but you're just gonna end up wanting to play it. So do it. You know. Oh, yeah. Man, it, it's sweet. It is, I will it is say, a sweet, sweet game. Yes, I will say one little sort of glitch is that when you download the demo and then choose to buy it, you have to re-download. Have, did you notice that? I had to like re-download all 800 megs. Yeah, I, I don't know if, if like you actually are downloading more content because it is a huge game. So I, I yeah, wouldn't you be surprised may be. if the demo is actually like you know a, a real demo for a disc-based game. You know where it's just a small chunk. Yeah, well, they 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 definitely cracked that that limit about live arcade games a long time ago. Um, so Castlevania Metroid Contra Gaiden, play it. Yes. Um, okay, so that takes us to the nostalgia portion of our show, which this week I want to talk about the Mickey Mouse Club. Whoa. Something we watched on the Disney Channel a lot. Fred and Nueva and the Mouseketeers <laughs> said, we're going to rock right here. So join the party. That is weird. Yes, and the party, that reminds me. Do you remember the band? I do. You had to vote. They were voting on the name for their band, and it turned out to be the party, and they had one hit. And I don't even know if it was a hit. It was just one single. <laughs> summer vacation <laughs> yeah i youtubed that the other day and, and yeah it's 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 odd because it's these skinny teenage I, at the time i thought they were like men now i look at them and they're like skinny emaciated boys with way too large leather jackets <laughs> and the one line is like girls in bikinis drive me insane or something like that and i'm like really mickey mouse club said that you know mm. it was very um fresh prince that song <laughs> yeah yeah definitely uh Oh man, what a '90s <laughs> thing! <laughs> yes, just it. It yeah. all of our hairstyles came from that show for sure. Yeah. For sure, and clothing. Options. Yes, and clothing. Because I watched it, and I and Matt totally used to have like the giant wave. I think if mm-hmm. it, it, like I, I've said this before, but if you didn't have a wave of some kind or two waves, you weren't awesome in the '90s and in the <laughs> late '80s. But a lot of those kids went on to be. Like stars, like Britney Spears, um, Carrie Russell. Justin. Yep. Yeah, Justin, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> yeah, they had a ton of people on the Mouse Cl- Mickey Mouse Club that 
And I'm talking about the new one, obviously, not the black and white, you know, geez. Yeah, but still the same thing hold, held true to that one. So it's weird that the, the tradition actually went on, whether they, they forced it or not. You know, they, they found really talented kids that yeah. grew into very talented adults. It was sort know? of like a, it was like a million models on your TV. Because, like, I, I watched one of their songs. Occasionally they would sing songs. And it can it cuts so fast between kids that you're like you can't even stop and process who all the kids are. <laughs> There's just a jillion, and then the white-haired Fred McMurray. I think it was Fred McMurray. It was kind of odd. Like Fred, he, he, um, <laughs> yeah, Fred I'll was like a, he beatboxed. He could do all yeah. kind of funny noises, but he had white hair. Like it was he was the caretaker of the Mouseketeers, I guess. Yeah, and, and um, he actually. He's still employed to this day by uh, the uh, Prairie Home Companion. Oh, geez, um, really? Yeah. It, there's some great uh, little sketches where uh, Garrison Keillor and uh, Fred, you know, will <laughs> tell Fred. stories. And, and he, he does the uh, the sound effects in the background. Okay, and cool. And Garrison Keillor kind of has to improvise with whatever sound effects he throws out. And so it's, it's two great <laughs> yeah, it's talents. Ha- yeah. Well, see, and that's where he kind of belongs, you know? Yeah. It was really weird to have, like, girls in bikinis make me lose my attention. And then he, like, does, like, a handstand. And you're like, wait, is that an old guy? <laughs> like, uh-huh. It was a little bit odd. But isn't it funny that now we're talking about Prairie Home Companion? Here's our current entertainment compared to where it once was. Now we listen to Garrison Keeler exactly. radio as opposed to, you know, oh, well. Fred Newman. F- oh, excuse me, Fred Newman, right. Fred and Nueva and the Mouseketeers. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this? Here, it's from the party, that same song. Tune in, cool out. Wait. Tune in. Tune in, groove on, bust out. Bust out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. We've officially lost the audience, by the way. We've lost all the audience. (laughs) If there's anybody left and they still would like to uh, send us an email, you may do so. Let us know some of your better memories of growing up, Uh, especially if you grew up geek like us. Our our website is found at growing-up-geek.com. Click on the link on the side, send us an email, and we'll read it on the show. And if you want to follow Rob on Twitter, you may do so at twitter.com slash G-U-G Rob. All kind of geeky posts throughout the week. Very cool. Uh, And I think that's going to do it for us this week once again my name is brad and we'll see you next week <laughs>